So, Freedom Planet 2 pretty much came out of nowhere, release date wise. The game has actually been in development for about 7 years, and it kind of stealth released with no real advertisement for some reason. I can say 100% that Freedom Planet 2 is not only my favorite 2D platformer, but I actually think these, this game is better than classic Sonic games, even Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic Mania. So if you don't know about Freedom Planet, Freedom Planet is basically was a Sonic fan-made game, but in the development they decided to make it its own thing. It's pretty similar to 2D Sonic games, it's very fast-paced, and it plays kind of like a Sonic game, but it does its own thing. It also kind of reminds me of Gunstar Heroes with how crazy and action-y the boss battles are. I think Freedom Planet is like one of the most underrated 2D platformer games out there. It is an indie title, but it is so well made. Freedom Planet 2 is just beyond amazing. It improves upon the first one in almost every way. So for this review, I won't get too much into the story. I'll talk about it a, li a little bit. And there might be minor spoilers, but I'll try not to, I'm not going to spoil much of the game. So, the story for Freedom Planet 2 overall is so much better than the first one. I think the first one, for what it was, was okay, but it was still pretty cringe. Now, Freedom Planet 2, I think the story is a lot better, and the voice acting, which was a problem in the first one, really improved. Now, in the story of Freedom Planet 2, I think the story really revolves more around Lilac and Carol compared to Mila and Nira, mostly because the main villain is a water dragon like Lilac, so, you know, them being the last of their kind, they kind of butt heads over it over the course of the game. Now, I kind of like the main villain just because it's more personal to Lilac, and like I said, Carol gets a lot of development in this game as well because her sister is on the villain side. So you get to see, you know, her coming in the terms with that. And, you know, her development is pretty good. And like I said, Mila and Nira, the two other playable characters, are kind of just along for the ride. As for the main villain goes, like I said, I do like that she's a water dragon like Lilac. And they kind of made her to be more sympathetic than Lord Brevran from the first game. And I know some people don't quite like her, but I actually think she's a pretty solid villain. And speaking of Lord Brevran, he's... here's a light spoiler. He's not in the game, but he is mentioned quite a bit throughout the game. Which honestly kind of made me wish he did appear. But his crazy henchman, Separatine, does make an appearance, which I think is great. He's actually, you know, as crazy as he was in the first game. But the more you play the game, you'll see a little bit more. Well, like I said, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers, so I won't talk too much about his role later in the game. And as I said before, the overall voice acting is so much better. The story, you know, it's a 2D platformer, so it doesn't need the be the best story you know for a 2d platformer but i think it's pretty you know easy to follow the narrative and it does its job pretty well and i really do like lilac's development in this game so now let's talk about the visuals and sound graphically i think the game looks amazing where the first one kind of looked like a sega genesis game this game looks more like sega saturn and ps1 probably a bit better. This game is very colorful and it has really good sprite work. I love the animations on all the characters, they're so expressive and I think Mila's are the best sprite work in the game, in my opinion. She's just so cute and adorable. The levels are also pretty good. Like I said, they're very bright, vibrant, and colorful and they also have very gorgeous backdrops to them. Overall, this game is definitely a step up from the first one. And honestly, I think this game looks better than Sonic Mania. And not only that, but there's just so much variety and just so much going on in the various different levels. As far as the soundtrack goes, it's really good. I really love the soundtrack and honestly, I think it might be better than the first one. If only because there's a lot more tracks than the first one, since there's so many more levels, 
uh, hub worlds and um, maps. It just has so much more variety. While I do think the first one had a few better songs, I think I'd have to say overall, this soundtrack's just too good. I mean, here, listen to a few of the tracks of the game. So now let's move on to my favorite part, which is the gameplay. So basically, Freedom Planet is kind of like Sonic meets Gunstar Heroes from the Sega Genesis and sort of its own thing. It's like very fast paced, like the actual levels are very Sonic-y. I mean, you blast through, you know, very fast. You know, it has the loops that you go around, the spring jump bounce thingies and a ton of different gimmicks in each level. This game also has four different characters that have different playstyles. There's Lilac, which is the speed type, and her main special is a boost, and then you have the brawler Carol, who can even ride a motorcycle. Um, then you have Mila, who's more, I guess, defensive, but she also can do short range well, she's more of a mid-range fighter. She can attack at a short distance, which is pretty neat. And then you have Nira, who I haven't really played much of at all. Um, she wasn't really doing it for me, but I mean, she can turn enemies into ice that you can, I don't know, jump on. So I'm sure, you know, there's some people out there that might like that. But for me, I really like Carol and Lilac. I beat in the game with both of them and I'm planning to rebeat the game with Mila because honestly she's pretty fun. I also like her little Yoshi flatter jump thingy she does with her ears. It's pretty cute. Now as far as the levels go themselves, man they're really something. Like I said it's pretty kind of think of a Sonic level. Well Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic Mania type levels where they're very big. They have like a bottom, middle, and top very explorable there's a ton of different paths and the cool thing about the different paths is that it has treasure chests where you can get extra items gems and the music of the stages which is pretty neat i don't know i spent a lot of time just for playing levels just for fun and just for going back looking for things i think my total first playthrough was over 10 hours yeah this game is pretty massive there's 24 stages along with boss stages and hub worlds and it really it's just a big game. Um, going back to the stages real quick, like I said they're very Sonic-y and they have a ton of different gimmicks and a lot of them are just so fun and they work like playing this game is just it feels so good. One of the levels gimmick has you going in and out of a waterfall which was pretty fun but it just looks so pretty as well and then you have another level where it's actually completely vertical so you're kind of making your way up a tower which i think is pretty neat because it changes up the pace a little bit uh there's another really fun fast-paced level where there's like two mechs fighting each other so many missiles and destruction and other enemy sites fighting each other as you blast your way through the level it's just so fun like i think it nails down the sonic gameplay but like cranks it up to about 100 with all the crazy stuff that goes on in the levels and with all the fun you know different gimmicks like this game truly understands what a sonic game should be but it makes it so much better by putting its own twist with having like 
a lot of enemies to fight that you don't actually have to fight but you know they're there if you want to you can still blast through them and then you know their own spin on different gimmicks and stuff like i just have so much fun you know blasting through the levels but i also have a lot of fun just exploring them so the level design honestly is just perfect like i honestly want to say it's perfect that's how good it is like way better than the first one now this game has a lot of different level variety. There's beaches, volcanoes, snow junkyards, battle arenas, carnivals, jungles, cities. The list goes on and that's a good thing because you'll never get tired of going through the levels because no level really overstays its welcome except for one of them. There's one level that just plain sucks. Basically you go through a cave and you're collecting keys now, after you collect the keys, you're all like, okay, it's time to fight the boss. But no, there's more keys to collect. After that, you're all like, okay, now it's time to fight the boss. But nope, you got to collect more keys. Then you can finally fight the boss. Now, this level, I wasn't a fan of. It literally took like 20 minutes to beat it. And aside from the actual good music it had, I don't really see me replaying that level. That's really the only level I didn't quite enjoy. But hey, when there's 24 different levels in a game, you know, there's bound to be one or two that just aren't that great. But now moving on from the levels and stages to the bosses. Now the bosses are absolutely crazy. If I could sum up the bosses in one word, it would be fucking holy shit. That was actually three, but you know what I meant. The bosses in this game do not joke around. They are very difficult and they have a bunch of different attack patterns and they will definitely kick your ass a few times. But at the same time, they're an absolute blast. Like some of them are just crazy. Like there's one boss where you're like grinding on a rail the entire time while you're trying to dodge its attacks and hurt it. It was just so cool. And then there's another boss battle where like you're in the air and then halfway through the boss battle, the arena like gets cut in half. So you're basically fighting in air most of the time. That was just fun. And then there's another boss battle where you're literally running on the beach. You're like running on water fighting this clam robot type thing. And holy crap, I thought Sonic had some pretty cool running boss battles. But this absolutely blows it out of the water, like literally. Aside from the awesome, fun, end of the stage boss battles, there's also stages that are just a boss. So these stages, the bosses are a lot more difficult and usually have more than one form. So it might be like a two form boss, but there is one boss in there that just has a ridiculous amount of health and is actually kind of difficult. One of my biggest tips when you fight the bosses is definitely make sure you're using the defend command. Basically when you hit it, it looks like a dodge, but you definitely need to learn how to master that because it's very important for the boss battles. You're going to really need to defend against a lot of their attacks and make sure you predict their, you know, pattern so you know when to use it. Because like I said, these bosses, they definitely don't joke around. Now, I played on normal, but halfway through the game, I almost wanted to put it on easy, but I didn't go that route. Instead, I used items, which is another mechanic in the game. Like, in the hub world, which I haven't talked about, but I might as well talk about them now. Uh, basically, your hub world, you can go and, you know, talk to different NPCs. Um, it's kind of like Shovel Knight and Zelda 2, like... It's just a little town where you buy stuff, but it also helps the world building and it breaks up the pace of the game. So those were pretty neat. Like I actually enjoyed visiting the different towns and regions, but going back to items and the towns, you can buy items that can help you from raising your attack or giving you extra life. Um, there's also a cool item that does like a shadow clone where, you know, you can use it and it attacks the enemy too. Um, I think that's pretty neat, but basically, and I would recommend playing normal and using items. Now items do make your rank, they do hurt your rank a little, 
but when you're playing through the game the first time, I don't think it's that important, so go ahead and use items and then just replay the levels to get a better rank, you know, without the items. Because the second half of the, of the game is definitely difficult. So, I think I covered almost everything. Um, aside from going back to the hub worlds, there's also a little museum there where you can, like, use, like, gems and robot parts or whatever to, like, rebuild the bosses just for, I don't know completion purposes i don't think it really serves anything but it's like there and then there's also the battle arena where there's a bunch of different challenges that you can you know do to earn like you know items and stuff like that and it also has where you can refight the bosses so that's worth checking out as well but i think i pretty much covered everything at this point Freedom Planet 2, like I said, is way better than classic Sonic games, and honestly, I think this is my favorite 2D platformer of all time. Like, it's really that good. It is a huge improvement over the first one, and it's kind of sad that this game has no hype and, like, you know, not that many people are talking about it. I mean, before I made this review, I was looking, and I, like, saw no big reviews, you know, doing this game so that kind of sucks but honestly i hope more people play this game because it is very good and it's very you know gonna be underrated and fly under the radar which kind of sucks because like this game is almost perfect like if you like classic sonic or actiony 2d platformers this game is worth it so definitely check out freedom planet 2 uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.